Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. I'm One Anatomy Geek, and here comes my partner, Jill Leary. Hello. How are you, Good. fellow How Anatomy you? Geek? Geek day. Geek day. We're going to geek out today on the tibialis anterior. Last week we talked about the posterior tibialis and how it is a common muscle involved with shin splints. The anterior tibialis is also another muscle that can be involved with shin splints. Typically we'll, well I should say, let's hold off on that. Let's talk about the muscle first and then we'll talk about shin splints. All right. So uh, tibialis anterior, just going to show you on my leg first with the help of Dr. Osar balancing me on this ball here. We didn't realize it was going to be in this much of a struggle. To be honest, it's yours involved with that, right? Exactly, it is. So on the front of your client's leg, um, you're going to have your shin bone, the tibia, and just lateral to the shin bone is going to be where the muscle belly of tibialis anterior is going to lie. So that's going to be there where you're going to palpate it. Um, the tibialis anterior is the most superficial muscle on the front of the leg and where it's going to originate from is along the if you find the shaft of the tibia and you move just lateral to it that is and this is a right um, leg and foot complex here is going to be where the muscle will originate now it also just like tibialis posterior it likes to um, originate from that interosseous membrane as well so lateral aspect of that tibia and then that interosseous membrane and then it travels down becomes a ropey tendon in front of the um, ankle and then it goes underneath that medial arch of the foot and goes on to the plantar aspect of the um, foot and it's going to um, insert onto the medial cuneiform and then the base of the um, big toe so because of where it's at it's going to be able to do dorsiflexion of the foot and inversion of the foot, which is tilting that foot inward. Cool. Now that's with the foot off the ground. We also know that the tibialis anterior has to work when the foot is on the ground. So what does it do when the foot is actually on the ground? What the tibialis anterior contributes to is maintaining that arch as the tibia is moving forward over top the foot. So if we think about walking as you put your heel down then the foot comes flat the tibia is progressing over top the talus here the tibialis anterior helps progress the tibia but it also helps to maintain that arch so the arch doesn't completely collapse as our body weight is moving over top the foot so that's its closed chain function so open chain function it will dorsiflex and invert and its closed chain function it will it will, it will control the arch as the tibia is progressing forward over top the foot now, how does that relate to shin splints? So if we think about the attachment, some people will get quote unquote sh shin splints. Some of your clients will feel pain along the anterior or front side surface of their tibia. That's usually what we refer to as anterior shin splints or medial compartment type syndrome, stress syndrome, medial tibial stress syndrome. If you have more discomfort on the lateral side or should say make that medial side of the tibia so again we're talking here on the inside the medial side is more the posterior tibialis tendon so that's more of a posterior shin splint or that posterior or medial tibial stress syndrome both these issues are often related to non-optimal alignment and control of the lower extremity and non-optimal and inefficient control of the biomechanics of the ankle and foot complex so one of our goals is is to help our clients develop more optimal control alignment and control of their lower extremity so that when they start to load the foot in a functional position the foot and ankle in a functional position upright position they're able to control that position now some of our clients need some isolated type work and this exercise here so we'll use this band here i'm gonna have jill stick her right foot out and the cool thing about this exercise is you can get both a posterior tibialis as well as the anterior tibialis at the same time because both these muscles will invert the foot. Okay, so posterior tibialis will invert as will the anterior tibialis. Posterior tibialis will plantar flex where the anterior tibialis will dorsiflex. So the cool thing about this exercise is you get both functions, both the inversion as well as the, an the dorsiflexion as well as the plantar flexion of the ankle. So I'm going to attach this 
band around Jill's foot. She's going to start in a dorsal flex position and a slight external rotated position of the tibia. Not too much to stress out her knee, but just enough that she's able to have a little bit of external rotation. What she'll do now is stay in dorsal flexion, rotate her tibia in, and then plantar flex her foot down so that her foot goes down flat. She has equal pressure between the big toe and small toe. Her toes are nice and long. So she's not trying to roll her foot down. She's just trying to put, place her foot down. So now that's a plantar flex flexion action of the motion. The band is still pulling her this direction. So basically pulling her out of that position. So now the plantar flexion function of the posterior tibialis is working. And then she'll lift her toes up slowly, her foot up slowly, and then externally rotate. So again, we get the dorsal flexion action to control, to control the external rotation. Now she'll internally rotate and put the foot back down. So again, we get both the concentric and the eccentric function of the anterior tibialis as well as posterior tibialis. We get the anterior tibialis working in dorsal flexion. We get the posterior tibialis working in plantar flexion. So she'll hold for about a count of five seconds and slowly lift up and then rotate back out. So a great way to start to train control of rotation of the tibia underneath the femur because oftentimes our clients with knee pain and or those shin split issues have issue controlling the tibia and the ankle and foot. So rotate in and place the foot back down and then hold. Toes stay nice and long so no gr toe gripping, not rolling inside or outside of the foot. And now hold for five seconds. And we'll have them do about five repetitions. So nice and slow and controlled. I'll have Jill turn to the side so you can see actually what it looks like from the side as well. So again, hook the tib hook the foot with the band, maintain the band out this direction. So again, not too much tension here. So rotate towards midline of the body until the tibia is aligned with the femur. Put the foot down flat, hold for a count of five, and then slowly come back up and then rotate back out. One more time, rotate in, place the foot back down. So again, you get the dorsal flexion action of the anterior tibialis, you get the plantar flexion action of the posterior tibialis, and you get the inversion action pulling against the band. So great exercise, looks simple enough. However, you really start to feel it working through the entire ankle and foot complex, which is a great aspect of this exercise. And then you start to incorporate that into a more functional upright position. I was telling them, yes, I do. I do feel <laughs> this. Okay, yes. So even though it's yes. a really easy exercise, it's quite challenging when you perform it slowly and controlled. So thank you, Jill. Thank you. We'll see you next week, yes? Yes. For a continu continuation of our ankle and foot month. If you're looking for more information, check out our certification course, the Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Certification Course where we focus on the functional anatomy, the biomechanics and motor control of the hip, shoulder, as well as core complex and how it relates to foot function as well. So that way you can create, or I should say create the most effective assessments, corrective exercises, and work this into the functional training progressions for your client. So that way you become that resource for your clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. Thanks again for watching us at Two Anatomy Geeks, Geeks, coming to you every Tuesday at this time, 12, 15 Central Time. If you have any topics you wanna to see in the future, please let us know. We're happy to help you guys out with this information and hopefully it serves you. If you have like-minded colleagues you think would benefit from this information, feel free to share this with them on your social media pages. You can also find us at IIHFE on Instagram post there quite frequently and actually I just did, showed a video on there I should say a picture of my client whose feet were like this which is a very common issue clients have when they wear shoes and they don't do the right exercises for their feet so again lots of great resources there as well so thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time at two anatomy geeks this is dr. Evan Oser with Institute for integrative health and fitness education make it a great day